Welcome to today's sermon, our fifth Sunday of Lent 2020. It is the 29th of March. And today, as we follow the way of Jesus in our preaching series, today our sermon is called The Healing Ministry of Jesus Christ. One of the big, biggest aspects of Jesus' ministry was healing. During his ministry, there were hundreds of people healed by Jesus' touch. One of my favorite healing stories involves a paralyzed man whose friends desperately want to take him to Jesus. The story is found in Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. We read, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they not, could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in, in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these th things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, Take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So here we have Jesus teaching from Peter's small and humble home to a few hundred people who all wanted to get in, get inside to catch a glimpse of Jesus or to hear Jesus' voice. Crowds stood at the windows and the doors, spilling into the courtyard. Several men had heard that Jesus was a healer. They had a friend who was sick, paralyzed, unable to walk. These men placed their friend on a stretcher, then picked him up and carried him to the house where Jesus was teaching. When they arrived, they found it impossible to get their friend inside to Jesus, so they improvised. They carried their friend up to the roof, which was made of thatch and mud, and began digging their way down, creating a large hole. I can almost hear Peter shouting at these men as the dust and dried mud began to fall on the heads of Jesus and those closest to him. I picture Jesus stretching out his hand to still Peter and whispering, Peter, roofs can be repaired, but I want to see this. Using ropes, the men lowered the stretcher until their friend was lying in front of them. Matthew, Mark and Luke all say the same thing about what happened next. Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the man, your sins are forgiven. Get up, take your mat, and walk. It is interesting to note that it wasn't the man's faith that got Jesus' attention. In fact, the man on the stretcher never said a word. We don't know if he had any faith. But his friends, who carried him, hoisted him onto the roof, tore open the roof, and lowered him to Jesus. They had faith. Because of their faith, Jesus healed the man. 
There are several things we can take away from this story. The first is that all of us need stretcher bearers. We need to ask ourselves, who are the people who will pick us up, tear off the roof and lower us to Jesus? We all need friends like that, whose faith is strong even when ours is weak. Who are friends, not just in word, but in deed also? Now these friendships don't just happen, you must invest in them. Often the way this happens is through small groups in church, whether it's the WA, Bible studies, support groups that you form, church friendships that you cultivate and, and protect and look after. Who are your stretcher bearers? Can you name those people who will carry you to Jesus if need be? Second, it is important to realize the depth of Jesus' compassion for the sick. If every one in every one of the gospel healing stories, we find that Jesus made a point of noticing and even stopping to heal these sick people. He had both the power to heal and the compassion to use that power. He constantly was involved with people who were sick, blind, lame, deaf, dumb and possessed. And he raised three people from the dead throughout the gospel. He cared about the sick and the troubled. It is vital to know and remember that when you are sick, Jesus notices. He has compassion. He is concerned. That is the kind of God we serve. But now, are you noticing those who are sick around you? Are you noticing those who need your compassion? Third, we need a note. It appears that the paralyzed man's illness was spiritual and psychological, not so much physical. The problem wasn't his spinal cord, it was his heart. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And only then added, take up your mat and walk. Perhaps the man was paralyzed with guilt over something he had done in the past. I've seen this before with people in my own counseling ministry. In the story, Jesus is essentially saying, I know the thing that has bound you. And I have the authority to say this to you. You are forgiven. Get up and walk. Get up and carry on living. As I think of the story, I, rem I am reminded of a story my father shared with me long ago from a situation he dealt with during his ministry. He knew a man who had become practically paralyzed in his life with guilt over the death of his daughter. A few hours before his daughter took her own life, he had verbally snapped at her during a conversation. The last words he ever spoke to her were in the heat of conflict. After that, he carried a paralyzing guilt that if only he had not said those words, she would still be alive. Others tried to tell him that her suicide wasn't caused by his remarks, but he was unconvinced. For years he was overwhelmed, paralyzed emotionally and spiritually, until finally he was able to trust in the grace of Christ and to hear the words, You are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Words spoken to him by Jesus through my father in a counseling session. At that point my father shared how it was like witnessing a complete and utter physical change in this man. It was as if his entire body became free from the paralysis that had come from his heart and mind and soul. 
how he walked, how he stood, how he spoke, all changed. He was not the same person after he had embraced the words of forgiving grace in his life. Now back in Peter's house at Capernaum, Jesus healed the man's heart, which led to his physical recovery. And I want to say, Jesus still heals hearts. He still forgives sins. He still heals our bodies, casts out demons, and sets people free. You may ask, but what about actual physical healing? We know Jesus heals us spiritually, but does he still heal us physically even today? Absolutely. I believe that with all my heart. I believe with all my heart that there are times where Jesus heals people physically through direct means. Where the medically unexplainable happens. But I also believe that Jesus absolutely heals physically through the instruments that he gifted the grace of healing to. Doctors, nurses, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, medical professionals, all being his ordinary means of working for healing today. But I also absolutely believe that if we are to follow the way of Jesus, we need to recognize that we are all being called to be a part of healing people. Just as each of us still need stretcher bearers, people who will carry us and pray for us and have faith for us when we are physically, emotionally, spiritually sick, we too need to be stretcher bearers for others. When we are there for those who are physically sick, when we befriend and support those who are trying to leave behind addiction, emotional trauma and life paralyzing ailments, when we as friends surround people in love, encouragement, assistance as they struggle with illness, life trauma or issues of faith, that is when we are being a stretcher bearer for others. And as we do so, we then realize that we are called to be healers in so many real ways. Jesus was constantly looking for the sick and oppressed. He had a heart for them. This is what we see as he stayed up all night at Peter's home to heal the sick and cast out demons. There are people all around us who are sick or oppressed or marginalized, especially during this time as the coronavirus spreads and when there are our other usual illnesses all about, even though we are in lockdown. However, if you want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, you need to look for those who need to be carried in faith during this time. You need to seek to be an instrument of God's healing and de deliverance during this time. You need to ask, who am I being a stretcher bearer for and carrying in faith? Even during this 21 day lockdown, in fact, especially during this 21 day lockdown, this is the time we need to bring healing to one another. This is the time we have to actively search for ways to carry one another in hope, in peace, in love. Even if it's just a phone call. But as we actively search for those who need to be carried, as we actively find ways to carry them in faith to Jesus, that's the only way we will all come through this lockdown period just a little bit healthier. 
And so I pray this throughout Jesus Christ, the one with the holy healing touch. And I pray that these 21 days will be 21 days where you won't just be focused on yourself, but you'll also be focused on those that need to be carried. And may you also allow yourself to be carried when you're feeling weak and down. And so may God be with you, and may he keep you, and may he protect you. May you be safe, and may you keep others safe during this lockdown period. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your healing touch. We thank you that you are always looking for those who are sick. And whenever we are sick, we know that you will forever be close to us. And so, Lord, during this time of isolation and lockdown, allow us to know with all certainty that you are ever-present ever willing to receive us and to let us know everything will be okay and that life will go on. We praise your mighty and holy name, Lord. Amen.